Thank you for joining us this evening for our webinar series. If you've missed any of our past webinars, you can watch them on our YouTube page. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, we will be holding them until the end, but you can submit them at any time via the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Today, I am happy to bring you Callie Conan with a presentation on the visitor effect. Callie became interested in primate care when she was obtaining her bachelor's degree in anthropology at California State University, Fullerton. After several years of volunteering at the Gibbon Conservation Center, she was accepted into Central Washington University's graduate program in primate behavior and ecology. She completed her thesis on visitor effects on captive gibbons, and after graduating in 2019, she was offered full-time employment here at Project Chimps. We're so happy to have Callie on the team with us. Take it away, Callie. Thank you very much, Megan. So I would like to start today by talking a little bit about our sanctuary. Project Chimps is a 236-acre sanctuary for chimpanzees located in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. And it houses 77 chimpanzees who were retired from biomedical research. Our mission is to provide lifelong exemplary care to chimpanzees retired from research. And we have been transporting chimpanzees since 2016 from the New Iberia Research Center in Louisiana. And here you have a photo of our trailer. We have a very dedicated team of drivers who transport these chimps nonstop. So there's no rests, no hotel breaks. It's uh, we stop once an hour to check on the chimps, but the humans, we just keep on chugging until these chimps are home. Here we have our North Peach, North and South Peachtree habitats. As you can see, we have five buildings, cedar tree, DJT, Chimps Ahoy, and Harmony each house one group of chimps, and the McGrath Family Chateau houses two groups of chimps. So all told, we are able to have 77 chimpanzees at the sanctuary now and more to come. We house our chimpanzees in large group villas. It is very important for chimpanzees to be able to socialize with other members of their own species. So we have designed housing for them to be able to live in these large groups. They have access to indoor and outdoor spaces and can choose whether or not they want to be inside or outside at any given time. We provide the chimpanzees with three meals a day of fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, and a nutritionally complete primate chow. And it is very important for us to give them these good things and keep them happy and healthy. We also provide them with daily enrichment. Chimpanzees are very intelligent. They need constant mental stimulation. And so we provide a variety of food puzzles and foraging activities for these chimpanzees. And here you have one of our lovely caregiver aides with a, an, an indoor enrichment of spinner bottles. The chimpanzees would have to find a stick or twig or some other implement to forage the food out of these bottles. And outside we have our termite mound, which is a similar concept. You see a couple of chimpanzees using sticks and twigs to forage similar items such as peanut butter, applesauce, smashed bananas out of the outdoor termite mound. So now let's get into what I'm here to talk to you today, which are visitor effects. Visitor effects are a very important part of a sanctuary that allows tours. It's very important for us to keep an eye on this. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to ask what are visitor effects and what impacts visitor effects. We're going to talk a little bit about how Project Chimps specifically manages our visitor effects and how our chimps respond to these visitors that we have every so often at our sanctuary. So what are visitor effects? Simply put, visitor effects are changes in a chimpanzee's response to the presence of unfamiliar humans or visitors. Uh, it can be positive, it can be negative, or it can be neutral. So let's look a little bit more into positive visitor effects. So positive visitor effects are what we are looking for in a good visitor program. And these include affiliative behaviors, such as grooming, playing, and reassurance. 
It increases in locomotion, which is good exercise and encourages the chimpanzees to utilize the full space that we have off offered for them. We also want to look for increases in species specific behavior. Uh, vigilance is a very important one. It is simply taking stock of their surroundings. This is something that wild chimpanzees do naturally in their native habitat in Africa. So to be able to stimulate that in captive populations allows them to have as close a life as they would have to living in the wilds. So we also need to be mindful of possible negative visitor effects. This could include increases in aggression, such as threatening vocalizations, postures, or facial expressions, and even more dramatic uh, scenes such as chasing or fighting. We also want to keep an eye on increases in stereotypes, uh, which are essentially nervous behaviors such as hair plucking, repetitive rocking, or regurgitation. We also want to make sure that we aren't look, seeing any decreases in species specific, uh, species typical behavior, such as grooming or foraging or nesting, which are all behaviors chimpanzees exhibit in the wild. And it is important for them to be able to exhibit this in captivity while we are trying to give them as much of a wild natural existence as we can. Then there are neutral visitor effects. This occurs when chimpanzees may be aware that visitors are there. They just don't particularly mind. They're not gonna seek the visitors out, but they're not necessarily going to run and hide from them either. So what impacts visitor effects? There are three main components, human behaviors, chimpanzee personalities, and habitat design. Human behaviors are very important uh, in ensuring the chimpanzees are not stressed by visitors. And these behaviors are following sanctuary rules. This is very important in reducing negative visitor effects. Uh, for example, at Project Chimps, we ask that visitors don't tap on the glass and that they interact using appropriate chimp talk. We also ask that they don't bring food around because it's rude not to share and we really don't want you sharing with our, our <laughs> don't want you sharing your lunch with our chimps. They're on a very specific diet. Uh, we also ask that visitors do not imitate hostile chimp behaviors as this can increase negative responses. A uh, big one that many may have heard of is uh, grinning. Now, when humans see a grin, we think happy, uh, but chimpanzees, when they pull their lips back and expose their teeth like that, they are actually exhibiting distress and fear. Uh, we also ask that people don't swagger around looking tough. Uh, that can look like a display. Uh, waving an arm like this is actually considered a very rude gesture for chimpanzees. So there's many little behaviors that our tour guides keep an eye on to make sure that guests aren't inadvertently irritating or stressing out our chimps. We also limit our group size and noise level. Uh, limiting the amount of time visitors are present can reduce negative responses. Essentially, be respectful as you would if you were invited to a human's house for the first time. Uh, this is very important in reducing chimpanzees' negative reactions to visitors. Let's move on to chimpanzee personalities. This is another huge factor in how chimpanzees respond to humans. So chimpanzees are each have different different personalities. They have individual preferences, individual responses to new things. Some chimps seek out new experiences. Others avoid them until another chimp tests the waters. Uh, by extension, this means that each chimp is going to react differently to the presence of a new human or a different visitor. Some of our chimps love visitors. Some of our chimps love avoiding visitors. And the highly curious and innovative chimps are, there's evidence that states that they are more likely to be comfortable around visitors. And speaking of curious and innovative, here we have Emma, who is one of the smartest, curi most curious and most innovative chimps at our sanctuary. All right, now let's talk about the last factor, which is habitat design. 
Now, in order to reduce visitor effects on chimpanzees, uh, promoting more positive visitor effects while reducing negative visitor effects, it's important to have access to large spaces. This gives the chimpanzees control over how close to or far away from visitors they are. It's also important to give them access to hiding spots. This allows chimpanzees to choose whether or not visitors can see them. It's also important to give them control over whether or not to interact with visitors. Uh, no one likes being forced into a situation that makes them uncomfortable. And so we strive to give chimpanzees a choice whether or not they want to interact with humans or not. That is a huge, important factor in reducing negative visitor effects and increasing positive visitor effects. And here we have Jermaine choosing to take a nice little nap on one of his platforms with a tiny piece of broccoli. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about how Project Chimp specifically manages visitor effects. We do this via our tour policies, our chimp care protocols, and our habitat design. Our tours are guided, uh, which is important because it reduces the risks of visitors accidentally mim mimicking a hostile behavior or doing something else that might stress out a chimp, but that really only someone who is trained to recognize potentially stressful behaviors uh, would be able to stop them from doing. So we have a wonderful team of trained tour guides who are able to make sure that all guests are behaving appropriately and respectfully towards the chimpanzees. Uh, our tours are also scheduled. Now, this is important because, one, it means that there's not constantly humans around. So if there is a chimpanzee who doesn't really want to be around humans, they have days where they don't have to worry about it. It also means that for the chimpanzees who do want to be around humans and investigate new people, they don't become habituated to new people coming in all the time. This means that they don't get used to, to visitors. It's always something new and exciting when it does happen because it doesn't happen every day. Our tours also only take place around the habitat and there are specific windows where they can interact. This means that the chimpanzees have the choice to retreat from view to retreat indoors if they don't want anything to do with any of the visitors outside. And here we have Harriet who wants lots to do with the visitors outside. She's always very interested. All right, so now let's talk about the chimp care protocols that we have in place to increase positive visitor effects and decrease negative visitor effects. The chimpanzees have access to their indoor villas at all times, which means they can retreat from view. This reduces the negative impact of visitors by allowing chimpanzees to remove themselves from stressful situations. If they're not feeling up to greeting new people today, they can simply choose to remain inside and they don't have to worry about it. We provide enrichment to give the chimps something else to focus on if they decide not to interact with humans. Again, we want to let the chimps choose who or what they focus on, and that is very important in promoting welfare. We also, as care staff, monitor the chimps for signs of stress. We can encourage tours to move along if chimpanzees appear uncomfortable. Fortunately, since the chimps have so much choice here and so much control over whether or not they are in view of these tours, it's very rare that, chim that care staff has to intervene. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about our habitat design. So we have windows which provide designated locations for chimps to interact with visitors. This means the chimps know where the humans are going to be. They're not going to be surprised by the sudden appearance of a human while they're out napping in the sunshine. They know where to go, where they can be if they want to be in view of the visitors versus where they can go if they don't want to be in view of the visitors. We also have a lot of space out in our large outdoor habitats. This gives chimpanzees the opportunity to choose how close they want to be to the visitors. Some chimpanzees choose to be right up against the glass, interacting with the visitors, putting on a little show. Others prefer to keep their distance. They'll maybe observe from several yards away or find a nice little hiding spot in the bushes to kind of peek uh, at what's going on without being seen, which brings us to our natural and artificial structures, which provide hiding spots. If the chimps begin to feel uncomfortable, there are plenty of places where they can run and hide, so they don't necessarily have to worry so much about being exposed during the open. And here we have Oscar hanging out in one of his favorite hiding spots. 
All right, so now let's talk about what you all actually came out to here to hear about, which is how the chimpanzees at Project Chimps respond to visitors. Now, as discussed before, there are three reactions that we see. We have chimpanzees who think visitors are very enriching. We have chimpanzees who like avoiding visitors. And then we have chimpanzees who don't really care whether or not there are people around. Here we have a picture of Haley, who is definitely in the first category. She finds visitors very enriching. In fact, she is the first bullet point on this slide, so that should tell you something. She will follow visitors from window to window. Uh, she loves all kinds of visitors, loves interacting, loves trying to scare them, loves looking at their shoes. So if you're ever out and about and Haley is following you from window to window, let her see her, your shoes. That'll really brighten up her day. Uh, we also have Buttercup who likes visitors and will investigate them if they are nearby, uh, but she's more opportunistic about it. She's not gonna follow them from window to window, but if she's by a window and they're by a window, she's gonna come up and say hi. She's gonna show some interest. We also have Latricia who particularly likes babies, which is very interesting to me. She also likes, um, back when she first got here, baby dolls. So it's an interesting little personality quirk of hers. We also have Leo. If you have ever volunteered in the kitchen, you have probably seen Leo hanging out, watching you preparing all of those wonderful fresh fruits and veggies for him. So Leo definitely is interested in seeing what the humans are up to. All right, then we do have some chimps who prefer to avoid visitors, uh, as is their right. Uh, that's a choice that they make that we respect. We have Eddie who loves the habitat, but he prefers not necessarily to interact with humans. So he is one of the ones who's more likely to be taking advantage of that wide space or those hiding spots. He definitely utilizes his habitat in some interesting ways to allow himself distance from visitors. We have Skye who prefers to avoid visitors as much as possible. She also prefers to avoid being photographed. She's just a little bit more reserved and we respect that about her and give her opportunities to retreat from view anytime visitors are around. And we have Patrick who doesn't really pay too much attention to visitors, but he will display at them to kind of let them know that he's boss and, you know, make sure they all know that this is his home and that they are just visitors. Then we have some chimpanzees who view visitors more as neutral stimuli. So Emma doesn't necessarily care if visitors are present or not. Uh, she's just gonna go do her thing. She's a very intelligent chimp, so she's always got something on her mind. And sometimes human presence just has a spot on the back burner while she focuses on something more important. We have Josh who loves the habitat, but he's not necessarily looking for visitor interaction. He doesn't really mind whether or not there are humans around. And then we have Lindsay in this photograph over here. She is a part of a 19 chimp group that was recently integrated this past summer. And she is way more focused on her group's dynamics than she is on visitor presence. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. She is a high ranking chimp. She's very important socially to their group dynamic. So she's constantly checking in with other members of her group and making sure that her people, her family are safe and doing well. She doesn't really care what's going on on the other side of the habitat wall. Now I would like to talk about a case study that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, Luke is one of the chimpanzees in Lindsay's group. He arrived at Project Chimps in the fall of 2019 with a lot of anxiety, particularly about anything new, new foods, new enrichments, and new humans. He had a very stereotypic display behavior that indicated that he was stressed in the presence of new humans. And we never punished him for that. We just accepted that this was how he was feeling. We let him express those feelings in a safe environment. And over time, we saw that those behaviors were lessening and lessening. He also did not venture very far into the habitat at first. 
He preferred to stay in the comfort of his indoor bedrooms and sometimes his outdoor porches, but he was very shy about this new opportunity that, you know, could have been very scary. He had never been outside before, and so it might have been a little overwhelming. But as care staff continued working with him, tirelessly providing everything that he needed to be healthy, he began to let go of some of those anxious behaviors. He began to, be, he became curious. He began investigating novel environments instead of being afraid of them, which was wonderful for us to see. Um, and then he did something that surprised all of us. Um, as he became more comfortable in the sanctuary, he started becoming more curious about new people. He wasn't doing his anxiety related displays anymore. He was looking for opportunities to interact with new people. And on one day when there was a tour, there was a group of people by the window nearest his villa at Chimsohoy. And the farthest I had ever seen him in the habitat was when he went up to that window to interact with those visitors. Uh, so that was a very big moment for him in his personal development and in his journey to living his best, freest life here in Sanctuary. So let's go over the takeaways uh, for this webinar. Uh, every chimpanzee reacts differently to visitors. This is because each chimpanzee is a different individual. They have different personalities. They have different desires and different things that they are interested in, different things that they're not so interested in. Uh, Project Chimps, because of this, is dedicated to giving each chimp as many choices as possible. This includes whether or not to interact with visitors. And as anyone who has had a tour here knows, they do exercise those choices very often. There's sometimes you will see many chimpanzees in a tour, sometimes you only see one or two, and that is because the chimpanzees are choosing where they are and who they're interacting with. And as we saw with Luke, tours are a very important part of enrichment and properly conducted can facilitate chimpanzees' personal development. Uh, so thank you all for your support and anyone who comes by a tour, they're watching you just as much as you're watching them. So have fun with it and just be respectful. All right, and I have a list of references for anyone who wants to delve in a little bit more into this topic. I can send these to you if you go ahead and email me at kconan at projectchimps.org. And thank you all very much for listening. Hey, thank you, Callie, that was wonderful. So now we do have time for some questions. So if anybody has a question, you can submit them via the Q and A icon at the bottom of your screen. And here we have one, Callie. What do you do when males display during tours? So when males display, it, we make sure that everyone knows kind of what's going on. You know, this is a display. This is a natural behavior that male chimpanzees do in the wild and in captivity. Uh, and we encourage visitors not to mimic these behaviors. Oftentimes when we see wildlife behaving a certain way, especially if it's directed towards us, we're social creatures. We want to, you know, show that we are paying attention we might try to mimic that because sometimes with humans, we know that that can achieve some common ground. But in this particular case, that is the last thing you want to do. So when a male displays, we encourage everyone to keep calm, uh, keep their reactions to a minimum and to check their body posture to make sure that they're not standing like big and aggressive, make sure that they're communicating through their body language that they understand this is the chimp's home, that chimp is boss. Nice, thank you. So do masks have any effect on interactions? Um, actually, uh, I'm, I don't know of any scientific evidence of this, but I do have an anecdote that still makes me laugh to this day. When we first began wearing um, reusable cloth masks, when it became evident that we would be in this pandemic for a little bit, uh, 
we wanted to start cutting costs and we went with reusable cloth masks. And one of our caregivers was wearing a pink cupcake mask. And she was working with a particular chimp named Precious, who is a bit of a curmudgeon. And for the longest time, we couldn't figure out what was going on with Precious, but she seemed very unhappy that morning. She wouldn't take any of her food. She was very angry, very aggressive. And then our caregiver changed her mask from a pink cupcake one to a different color. And just like that, Precious was fine. Uh, so she did not like that particular mask. So there's, there's a chance that it does impact interactions, but you can never really predict how until you take the time to do a sort of systemized study on that. Excellent. How have things changed with the visitor effects in times of COVID? Again, I haven't been able to do any systematic studying of this. However, anecdotally, I will say that with fewer tours, the chimpanzees who enjoy visitors are much more lively, much more energetic, um, because this is such a rare opportunity for them now that we're not having as many tours. So they are following around at the windows more. They are tapping uh, against the glass at visitors more. So they are a bit more animated, um, kind of almost a little relieved to see someone new every once in a while. And the ones that don't particularly care for humans are doing just fine. Nice. Do chimps see color the same way that we, we do, such as if we're wearing colorful clothing? Yes, chimpanzees can similar to how we can. And we do have a chimpanzee, Haley, who we can't ask her, so we can never know for sure, but we think her favorite color might be pink because whenever uh, visitors, particularly children, come by wearing anything pink or sparkly, she is obsessed. She will follow them. She will try to trade objects from the habitat for their whatever it is they have that is sparkly or pink. So they do tell colors and there is a possibility that they have favorite colors as well. Nice. Are the chimps interested in cameras during tours? Some of them are. Some of them are interested in this strange object that you're pointing at them. They will come closer to investigate. You can get some very interesting shots that way. Others, again, see something new and mechanical like that and they're not really interested. They prefer to keep their distance. They don't really know what it's about and they err on the side of caution. So again, it depends on the chimp. Awesome. How about, do you think, um, or can chimps feel our anxieties? Absolutely, I do think that there is an emotional awareness that they have. Chimpanzees among each other can pick up their, their group mates anxieties. They're definitely paying attention to the chimpanz the other chimpanzees body language. And it makes sense that, you know, humans are such a big part of these chimps lives. It is important for them to kind of be, be aware of our own mental and emotional states. So they're constantly aware of our body language and they can sometimes see things in our body language that even other humans can't see. So they definitely can be aware if a human, uh, if a human is stressed or if a human is feeling relaxed, they know, you know, if a human is going to respond well to them and provide them care versus if a human is not necessarily, you know, on their good side. Uh, fortunately, we have a wonderful care staff of uh, very dedicated individuals. Um, and as we can see with Luke, we recognized his anxiety, but it, we didn't let it make us anxious. And over time that helps him work out his own anxiety and start becoming more outgoing and curious. Excellent. Do the chimps like kids? Some of them do. Some of them definitely do. Latricia, as we mentioned before, loves babies. Um, Haley loves children. Uh, and then you have chimps like Harriet, who just loves everyone. So we definitely do have chimps who are more interested in kids, uh, just like we are more interested in baby animals when we go to the zoo. Nice. 
Do the chimps maintain long-term ties with other chimps once they arrive at the sanctuary? I would say so. Um, now, definitely when they arrive at sanctuary, there's a lot of changes happening within, you know, a few months time. We have, they're coming in to a new place that they have to discover, you know, how to get around in, what works for them, what doesn't. They are being introduced to new foods and new enrichments. And, you know, a lot of changes like this can test a, a friendship or a relationship. So, we'll see chimpanzees that are very tightly bonded at first still remain bonded but kind of start branching out and making friends with other members of their group when we introduce groups of males and females that's another instance where those friendships get tested uh, but we do also see those friendships carry on through these stressful situations um, such as, for example, we have Roxy and Kirsten, two young females who arrived uh, in the fall of 2019 that were friends coming in and they would share food with each other. They would play with each other. Kirsten lets Roxy suck Kirsten's thumb, uh, which is kind of cute. And then they got introduced to males and Roxy was much more outgoing in that situation. She was much more willing to, you know, dip her toes in this new social situation. Whereas Kirsten was kind of a little bit busy figuring out, you know, just how to behave appropriately among all these males while Roxy was exploring the, this new social situation. So it did take a little bit of time. They kind of had their own separate things going on for a little while, but they did eventually, you know, get right back to being the best of friends and they are almost inseparable. Nice. On average, about how long does it take for them to adapt to a new place? It varies again from chimp to chimp, which I know is, you know, maybe not the most satisfying of answers, but it is what we've seen. We have some chimps who, as soon as they step foot, are like, all right, this is my new home. I'm excited to explore. I'm excited to check out some new situations. And then we have some chimps where it does take a little while. Um, and again, it's their right to take as long or as short a time as they need to adjust. If I had to put a number on it, I would say about three months is when we start, when a new group of chimpanzees arrives. That's when they start becoming as a group relaxed enough for us to see sides of their personality that they hadn't necessarily shown us before. But again, it varies from chimp to chimp. So it's our job as staff members to just meet each chimp where they are every day, no matter how long or short they've been here. Excellent. Have you noticed the, the change in seasons affect chimps behavior? I would say so. I definitely, think that a lot of them are happier now that the sun is out and it's warmer outside. They don't always utilize the habitat as much when it is cold or raining or snowing. Uh, so I do think that they have preferences in terms of weather. Uh, so the seasons, I would say, affect their behaviors and the likelihood of them coming out to greet a visitor at the window or just take a nice long walk in the habitat. Excellent. Well, thank you everybody for um, submitting your questions. And if we didn't get to all of your questions, you can send us your questions in via email at events at projectchimps.org. And if you'll go along to that next slide, Callie. So it does cost approximately $22,000 a year to take care of all the chimps and that's each one of our chimps and that's everything required for their food their housing, their medical care, enrichment, activities. And we do thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. If you would like to join us as a visitor for one of our upcoming events, we hold Chimps Rock annually in April, Discovery Days annually in May and September, and Chimp Retreat is always the weekend before Halloween in October. You can find more information on our website under the visit tab, or you can send us an email at events at projectchimps.org. You can catch us next month, third Thursday at 5 p.m. for our next webinar. 
and you can watch all of our past webinars on our YouTube channel. Until then, thank you for your continued support of the chimps. We couldn't do it without you.